tell me about your decision to ride a bicycle from San Diego to San Augustine. Well, uh, I had uh, left my wife, Joan, and uh, realizing that uh, I was leaving after the nest was empty of children. They had all gone off to college and mostly graduated from college. And I, I deserted the marriage. And uh, one of the last things Joan said as we were in the divorce court was, uh, I hope nobody ever falls in love with you because you're not capable of loving them. <laughs> Which is probably an accurate statement. Seem excited about something. You're not capable of loving anybody uh, back, and uh, I realized that was true. Uh, and uh, I decided to seek some counseling, and I met a psychological counselor who we had used before in our marriage and finally realized in the course of that that I was an angry person, that I harbored a terrible anger and that I had covered it up and disguised it so most people wouldn't recognize it. But I had to, and about that time I, I had uh, bladder cancer and uh, I remember when they removed the, the, the cancer which was described as about the big as the end of the little finger why me God I, I, I don't understand why I would get cancer and the answer that came back to me was uh, do you expect to spend the rest of your life as an angry man, prisoner of anger. And that was out of the blue. I had thought of myself at that point as an angry person, but I certainly was. I was full of rage and anger, and uh, although I would never tell anybody that. At any rate, uh, <clears throat> After living alone for a couple of years, I, I met uh, Lynn, and uh, Lynn was a student at Ohio State University going on a co-op program, so she was in about her sixth year of going to Ohio State part-time. She was the best storyteller I had ever met. She had a way of describing things that she had done with AYH, uh, mostly bicycling in Columbus, Ohio, and she had led bicycle trips to Cape Cod and other places, and she was, she had her own car, a BMW 2000, she did her own repairs on that car. And I began to uh, be attracted to her because of her storytelling. She also was uh, learning to do mapping and surveying in the caves and had done some surveying on, on cave trips with AYH uh, members from Columbus. And, uh, well, one thing led to another, and we became closer friends, and eventually uh, 
This was about 1979, and by 1982, I uh, proposed that we uh, get married. Well, by this time, she had bought me a, a good bicycle, a good road bicycle, and we had gone on some bicycle trips and had a great time. Well, I was knocked flat by her willingness to get married and thinking that was a great idea. So in 1983, we got married. and uh, Well, we went on lots and lots of rides, including 100-mile rides out of Columbus down to Portsmouth, Ohio, and back the following day. So you'd have a 205-mile ride on a weekend. And so we went on lots of bicycle riding. Well, then she had gone on one of the first long-distance rides uh, in modern times uh, to Washington, D.C. So we had talked about uh, doing a coast-to-coast -coast ride, and eventually we got to a place where we bought a tandem and went on some of these 200-mile rides and got to thinking about uh, what it would be like to ride across the country. Well, the first thing is you need a lot of time to do a ride like that. Uh, she was working as an engineer for the Air Force Laboratory and discovered that in addition to three or four weeks of leave, you could ask for and generally receive unpaid leave. So it was clear that it would take two months to do such a trip. On the other hand, the tandem that we bought was, I rode the front, she rode the back, but the geometry was wrong. She has very long legs for the rest of her body. Uh, not like average people. So we, I, I think we both said, well, we'd have to get a tandem made for a trip like that to our measurements. And so we found a builder who was willing to do that in Baltimore and uh, named Belinky. And he built us a tandem and we signed up for a ride the Southern Tier, it's called, from San Diego to St. Augustine. Well, we practiced on our old tandem uh, to get in shape for that. We, we both knew that in order to do cave exploring, you have to get in shape for it. And after a while, you can do long trips. Well, we were both doing long trips. Uh, I said to Lynn, at one point, I think before we got married, that I want to find the connection to uh, Turopal Cave, and she said, uh, so would I. So we, in effect, became a team, and we went on trips of discovery. We discovered Logs and River about the same time somebody else discovered it at a different place, and that turned out to be the key that unlocked an awful lot of cave in the active river system, including finally in 1983, uh, I think, the connection with Rockwell Cave. So we went on very long cave uh, mapping trips, exploring this brand new part of the cave. And as married people, we uh, were also doing long bicycle trips. And so when the Belinky tandem came, we signed up for a, a trip across the southern tier. And uh, she was able to take all of her leave in one package and also get extension up to 
eight weeks of leave with a, if she wouldn't take any pay for the final four weeks. So we were all set. We uh, and we were uh, well trained for that trip and flew out to San Diego and off we went with uh, 14 people, the leader and 13 other people on this trip. Well, we did very well on the trip. There was one woman who had uh, ridden that route five or ten years before that and she was going to go on the trip and she was way overweight and she <coughs> quit at the end of the first day because there was a, a long climb out of San Diego up into the mountains and it was just too exhausting for her. I was the end of her participation. Well, we, we uh, had done our homework and we had the right equipment for the trip, the right tent. Other people were trying to camp in little pup tents and we had a pretty good sized tent so you could move all the baggage into the tent when it rained and it wouldn't get rained on. And, uh, we had thick sleeping pads so we got a good night's rest on every trip while other people were using very thin pads and didn't sleep very well. And uh, I remember when they removed the, the, the cancer, which was described as about the big as the end of the little finger, why me? God, I, I, I don't understand why I would get cancer. And the answer that came back to me was, uh, do you expect to spend the rest of your life as an angry man, prisoner of anger? And that was out of the blue. I had thought of myself at that point as an angry person, but I certainly was. I was full of rage and anger, and uh, although I would never tell anybody that. At any rate, uh, <clears throat> after living alone for a couple of years, I, I met uh, Lynn, and uh, Lynn was a student at Ohio State University going on a co-op program, so she was in about her sixth year of going to Ohio State part-time. She was the best storyteller I had ever met. She had a way of describing things that she had done with AYH, uh, mostly bicycling in Columbus, Ohio, and she had led bicycle trips to Cape Cod and other places, and she was, she had her own car, a BMW 2000, she did her own repairs on that car, and I began to uh, be attracted to her because of her storytelling. She also was uh, learning to do mapping and surveying in the caves and had done some surveying on, on cave trips with AYH uh, members from Columbus. And, uh, well, one thing led to another and we became closer friends and eventually uh, this was about 1979 and by 1982 I uh, proposed that we uh, get married. Well by this time she had bought me a, a good bicycle, a good road bicycle and we had gone on some bicycle trips and had a great time. Well, I was knocked flat by her willingness to get married and thinking that was a great idea. So in 1983, we got married. And uh, 
Well, we went on lots and lots of rides, including 100-mile rides out of Columbus down to Portsmouth, Ohio, and back the following day. So you'd have a 205-mile ride on a weekend. And so we went on lots of bicycle riding. Well, then she had gone on one of the first long-distance rides uh, in modern times uh, to Washington, D.C. So we had talked about uh, doing a coast-to-coast -coast ride and eventually we got to a place where we bought a tandem and went on some of these 200-mile rides and got to thinking about uh, what it would be like to ride across the country. Well, the first thing is you need a lot of time to do a ride like that. Uh, she was working as an engineer for the Air Force Laboratory and discovered that in addition to three or four weeks of leave, you could ask for and generally receive unpaid leave. So it was clear that it would take two months to do such a trip. On the other hand, the tandem that we bought was, I rode the front, she rode the back, but the geometry was wrong. She has very long legs for the rest of her body, uh, not like average people. So we, I, I think we both said, well, we'd have to get a tandem made for a trip like that to our measurements. And so we found a builder who was willing to do that in Baltimore and uh, named Belinky. And he built us a tandem and we signed up for a ride, the Southern Tier it's called, from San Diego to St. Augustine. Well, we practiced on our old tandem uh, to get in shape for that. We, we both knew that in order to do cave exploring, you have to get in shape for it. And after a while, you can do long trips. Well, we were both doing long trips. Uh, I said to Lynn at one point, I think before we got married, that I want to find the connection to uh, Turopal Cave, and she said, uh, so would I. So we, in effect, became a team, and we went on trips of discovery. We discovered Logsdon River about the same time somebody else discovered it at a different place, and that turned out to be the key that unlocked an awful lot of cave in the active river system, including finally in 1983, uh, I think, the connection with Rockwell Cave. So we went on very long cave uh, mapping trips exploring this brand new part of the cave. And as married people, we uh, were also doing long bicycle trips. And so when the Belinky tandem came, we signed up for a, a trip across the southern tier. And uh, she was able to take all of her leave in one package and also get extension up to eight weeks of leave with a, if she wouldn't take any pay for the final four weeks. So we were all set. We, uh, and we were uh, well trained for that trip and flew out to San Diego and off we went with uh, 14 people, the leader and 13 other people on this trip. Well, we did very well on the trip. There was one woman who had uh, ridden that route 
five or ten years before that, and she was going to go on the trip, and she was way overweight, and she <coughs> quit at the end of the first day because there was a a long climb out of San Diego up into the mountains, and it was just too exhausting for her. I was the end of her participation. Well, we we uh, had done our homework and we had the right equipment for the trip, the right tent. Other people were trying to camp in little pup tents, and we had a pretty good sized tent, so you could move all the baggage into the tent when it rained and it wouldn't get rained on. And, uh, we had thick sleeping pads, so we got a good night's rest on every trip, while other people were using very thin pads and didn't sleep very well. That's one of the things we learned from caving, that is you have to eat pretty well to do endurance caving, and you have to sleep pretty well to, to do long bicycle trips. So you need to have, be, have a comfortable sleep and pretty good eating to, to do that kind of stuff. Anyway, we, uh, we didn't just survive the trip, we enjoyed the trip every day for two months. And Lynn had a background of working one summer for a, 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 a bicycle store where she assembled bicycles and learned to repair them. So she was the chief mechanic on the trip <laughs> informally. And uh, at any rate, that's the story of that trip. We had a great time. and. Uh, we uh, enjoyed it thoroughly. The tandem is in the other room, but we seldom ride it anymore, but uh, perfectly good tandem. And what year was this? Uh, 2000. And at the time you were 71? Yeah. Lynn was born in 1957, so... You see, that was kind of a strange marriage. People accused me of going after Lolita. Nabokov uh, wrote a book called Lolita, in which this old man goes after this 13-year-old girl. And, uh, yes, it's been and other people accused Lynn of trying to marry her father. <laughs> Since I was old enough to be her father. It's an age gap. Yeah. Yes, I'm aware of that. <laughs> uh, and I know about Nabokov, and I've read the book, and okay. I've seen the original movie with... Uh, yeah, there was a movie. There's been several of them, but I, I just saw the first one, which was... Uh, Humbert, Humbert. Yeah, Humbert, Humbert. But at any rate, uh, we had a lot of counseling before we got married because I didn't want to be Humbert, Humbert in this whole thing. And that's not fair to the person you're interested in. And uh, so it was important that we went into a marriage realizing I would die before and be an ancient old doddering man before she was in her prime of life. So these are issues that we faced uh, before we got married and uh, understood. And uh, she did not want to have children. I had long since had a vasectomy so that I was not capable of having any more children. Um, so children was not an issue. She was a generous person and uh, bought me a bicycle back before we were romantically interested in each other. And uh, 
So I knew she was a generous person. So we had an agreement about money and agreement that she understood that I was an old man practically at the time she was marrying me, but she knew a number of old bicyclists who she enjoyed uh, riding with, and so and so she was not terrified by the thought of marrying me. So anyway, that's the story of the cross-country ride. And we continued to make these long bicycle trips various places. We rode from uh, Dayton to Bar Harbor, uh, Kitty Hawk uh, was another of these long trips. So we've been on a number of very long trips. Yeah, I was just curious about that because it seems like a an adventure that'd be something I don't know, worthwhile doing. <laughs> uh, well, it's not for everybody, but it's like long distance caving. That's not long that's not for everybody either. Many veteran cave explorers don't like to go on trips that last more than eight hours. <laughs> Which is okay. I mean I I have no trouble with that, except you're not going to learn anything about Mammoth Cave if you're only going to stay eight hours on a trip. Did you carry all of your gear for the trip yourself? Yes. yes. There wasn't any, like, support vehicles? No, or it was not a supported trip. We'd been on both kinds of trips, and we pretty well had refined our kit, so it was not a problem to carry all the stuff we needed. 